Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I uh, apologize for the technical issue that I encountered just now. I hope that I can finish uh, this talk uh, on time. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is San Anto. I am, uh, you know, as you see, and my logo is an Oracle employee. So I'm uh, uh, Oracle MySQL uh, Principal Solution Engineer. And today I would like to uh, share with you uh, a little bit details about uh, InnoDB cluster set. As the name um, indicates, the InnoDB cluster set is set of InnoDB clusters. So the expectation here is you have a couple of InnoDB clusters, more than one InnoDB clusters running on multiple sites. And cluster set basically uh, is um, standardized uh, technology on how we can uh, do data synchronizations between uh, InnoDB clusters that's you know, running on multiple sites. And this is, uh, you know, for disaster recovery solutions. Why we do this? Because, um, you know, we realize that um, organization face the uh, big challenge, especially if there is a major outage on primary data center, and it, ca it can cost them a lot, okay, based on survey. Okay, it is uh, more than half saying that they experience an outage costing more than uh, 100,000 uh, US dollars. And most of the time, um, they say that uh, on-site power failures is the biggest uh, cause of uh, significant outage. And you know, right, uh, in a data center, there are a lot of uh, important stuff over there. Uh, we have servers, we have firewalls, we have database applications, everything is mission critical, okay? And power is just uh, one of it, okay? Power is not everything in that case, but those everything is nothing without powers. If you lost powers in data center, that's, that's it. So to mitigate this, uh, then we need to have, you know, uh, business uh, need to have uh, alternate sites and running a uh, duplicate of the system yeah, uh, on the alternate site and do database asynchronizations. And as you see, uh, we have a uh, MySQL asynchronous replications. Um, it's very simple, okay? It has been around a long time back. We have source, we have replicas. Uh, every time uh, we make transaction and commit it on the source, then the lock event will be sent over to the replicas and the replicas uh, threads will actually uh, capture the data and then uh, commit uh, the same data uh, to the storage engine so that the expectation is we have uh, source and replicas uh, running uh, and data will be consistent, but it's not always true. And in the past, okay, uh, DBA have uh, a lot of job, especially if they want to deploy replicas okay um, primary and secondary here yeah? uh, source is where the uh, transactions happenings and uh, replicas is where the transaction is getting replicated and uh, we have a new terms called primary and secondary okay primary is read white secondary is read only and uh, a lot of jobs that the dba need to be uh, i mean need to be done by the dba in the past uh, they need to do backup of database and then they need to transfer the backup uh, from the primary site to the alternate site. They need to restore the backup uh, to create a secondary database and, you know, starting up in read only mode. And they need to create uh, replication users on primary database and uh, assign replication slave uh, privilege to the replication users. And they need to go to the secondary database, connect to the secondary database and create the replication channels. All this need to be done manually and it's not a complete solution if you are, if you are talking about disaster recovery solutions. Because uh, disaster recovery means that we need to orchestrate as well, right? If the outage happens, then we need to make sure that human interventions will be minimum. Okay, everything should be standardized, okay? Then, uh, you know, there are a lot of, you know, workarounds that need to be done in the past, let's say, uh, doing a custom script, for example, for DR orchestrations, or uh, incorporate uh, third-party tools, okay? Uh, just in case if DR activation is happening, then uh, they can use this third-party tool to orchestrate uh, this, the disaster recovery uh, procedures. But now we have um, InnoDB clusters, okay? InnoDB clusters is based on group applications, as you see. Uh, it's still using asynchronous replication underneath Okay, however, we use uh, group replications uh, protocols basically to make sure that this asynchronous replication become really synchronous, yeah? Data will be consistent across the InnoDB clusters. 
members. Okay, we have primary uh, we, and multiple secondary. Okay, it is uh, read, uh, read scalables. Yeah, primary will run on read write mode, and secondary will run on uh, read only. And we have mask routers, as explained by the previous uh, presenter. Okay, uh, mask router is our default. Uh, uh, I mean, component in uh, in ODB clusters to provide um, connection transparency to the application, so that the applications to connect to in ODB cluster does not need to change. Okay, of course, this is a layer for uh, routers. Yeah, it's based on uh, port number. Yeah, uh, there are two kind of port numbers. First is read write port, and second is read only port. So application will see mask routers as database endpoint, so they can connect to the mask routers. If application connect to the read write port, then MySQL router will re redirect the connections to the primary. If the application connected to read only port, then it will redirect the connections to uh, the secondary nodes. <laughs> and we have uh, integration as well with MySQL shells. Okay, MySQL shell has admin API that enable DBA to deploy this in ODB cluster easily. Okay, uh, you don't have to take a quite long time actually to pick up how to deploy in ODB clusters. It's very easy. You can deploy three node in ODB cluster within less than five minutes if you talk about standard default in ODB cluster installations. Okay. Okay. This this one is the, uh, the differences between uh, synchronous replications, normal asynchronous replication, and synchronization that happening uh, in the Kube replication that used by in ODB clusters. Every time there is a new transactions getting committed, then it needs a consensus. It needs quorum. Uh, consensus happening when. Um, more than half or majority of the nodes are within the group application itself, okay, certify the transactions. Then the trans transaction will get committed on all nodes. The result is in the big clusters can provide maximum data protections. Okay, whenever there is new transactions going into the routers, read write uh, on read write pops, then the routers will redirect that uh, connections to uh, primary nodes. And uh, if there is any commit, then the uh, lock event will be sent over uh, to the, all the secondaries, um, and uh, you know certification process will be, will happen. And uh, upon quorum, okay, each members will commit the transaction to the InnoDB uh, storage engine. There are a lot of um, you know uh, models or types, okay, to control the consistency in InnoDB clusters. If you take a look over here, right. Uh, the time when the transaction is really getting committed on each node cannot and may not be the same on the same time, okay? Uh, because we are using consistency, uh, eventual consistency as the default consistency in, in ODB cluster. However, if your application connected to the secondary node and require new data, then we can set the uh, consistency to be four. Okay, there are four consistency, before, after, eventual, and before and after. So this is uh, pretty much application requirements. So the InnoDB clusters also provide automatic failover. Whenever um, not a primary node is failing, then uh, group applications will promote one of the nodes uh, to become a new primary, and application does not need to change the connections because uh, MySQL routers, yeah? So because of MySQL routers. So MySQL routers will redirect the uh, read -write connections to the new uh, InnoDB uh, cluster primary node. How about if the fail node comes back? Once the fail node comes back, then it will try to join back to the clusters. So we have auto healing um, capability. Yeah. So once the node comes back, then it will try to catch up the transactions, to catch up, catch up the, the state uh, by doing um, recovery. Okay, it can be used. Uh, it can it can use clone or it can use uh, incremental recovery, and the uh, group replication framework will automatically select uh, which um, distributed recovery method okay suitable for uh, recovering the uh, fail nodes. And once it is completed, then the fail node will join fully join uh, to the NodeDB clusters as secondary node. And at that point in time, okay, the routers will start to uh, to see this uh, secondary node. Yeah, so the fail node will be joined back as a secondary node. How about the MySQL routers? We advise MySQL routers to be installed on, you know, on, this, on the same host as the application so that the application can connect to the local MySQL routers. Or 
you know, uh, optionally, we can run MySQL routers outside uh, the application servers, but uh, you need to provide uh, high availability of the MySQL routers, yeah? You need to have uh, more than one MySQL routers, and uh, load balance will be, or high availability of the MySQL router will be, we need to be provided uh, by third party, let's say, pacemakers or keep alive. And uh, in 2020, we released you know, the replica set. Okay, it's basically a uh, MySQL asynchronous replication with add-on integrations with MySQL shell. Okay, admin API. So creating the uh, asynchronous replication is no longer completely manual process, but it is more automated and orchestrated using admin API. And secondly, is uh, integrations with MySQL routers. Okay, so. Uh, using a MySQL EODB replica set, we don't need to have like an OPIP failover in it when master is failing or something like that. But we can use uh, MySQL routers basically to redirect the connections uh, from the applications if application connected to the read web port of the routers. If the primary node fail, then uh, the uh, and, 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 and primary node is um, available on the other nodes, then uh, MySQL routers will redirect the new connections to the new primary node. Uh, but bear in mind, this NODB replica set does not have automatic failovers, yeah? So we need to uh, failover the uh, primary node manually. So uh, in order to make this even more suitable for, uh, you know, disaster recovery solution, we have uh, disaster tolerance uh, solutions with MySQL NODB replica set. So what is a replica set? We have um, two uh, or more NODB clusters with asynchronous replications to replicate data between primary of the primary clusters and second cluster, we call it as replica clusters because it is read-only clusters, okay, replicate into the primary node of the replica clusters. Bear in mind that in this uh, architecture, only one node, which is primary node of the primary cluster will be running on read read. The rest of the node will be running on read only, okay? The rest of the node will be running on read only. Upon, uh, you know, commit on the primary, Okay, once the certification done, the transaction is committed on the primary, the data will be as uh, replicated using asynchronous replication to the primary node of the replica clusters. And again, it has, um, you know, uh, MySQL shell admin API so that you can uh, install and configure in very, very uh, easy way. Yeah, easy way. So if you have uh, three data center, then you can actually extend, okay, uh, each of data centers will have its own InnoDB clusters, but only one become a uh, primary cluster and two are replica clusters. We don't have automatic failovers of the, uh, from the primary cluster to replica cluster, but I, I will tell you why later on. Okay, uh, not every cluster has to be uh, on three nodes. Okay, uh, we can have uh, one of the clusters, okay, have different uh, topology. Let's say you only need to have uh, disaster replicas on disaster recovery, but you don't want to have a high availability. Okay, that's fine. You can have a uh, you know replica cluster only consists of one node, which is a primary node that running on read only on your disaster recovery site. How about MySQL routers? MySQL routers can run on every site, uh, every data center. Okay, and the application can transparently connect to the MySQL routers. Okay, if MySQL routers, I mean, if application connect to the MySQL routers in read web ports. Since MySQL router aware about the cluster set topology, the MySQL routers will connect this, uh, the connect, the, reconnect the connections to the uh, primary node of the primary clusters. So, in underlying, even though in the database infrastructures we have a single clusters become a, you know, it's a read-write clusters, and then the rest are read-only clusters. But if you have requirements that require each site to be active, active, then you can use MySQL routers as database endpoint, yeah? Because MySQL routers uh, can run on everywhere, okay? So, as you see over here, even though MySQL routers, by default, always looking for the primary clusters, okay? MySQL routers running on standby set can also uh, connect to the primary clusters, but we can have, you know, additionally, optionally, we can have MySQL routers running uh, to connect only to the specific cluster with, within the InnoDB cluster set. So this is the MySQL InnoDB cluster set configuration. First of all, we, we can create, we need to create InnoDB cluster. As you see, it's very simple. Okay, dba.create cluster. Then you will have one InnoDB cluster with one node. And then you can just add instance, okay, to add the second node and to add the third node. 
you don't need to do a backup and recovery because it will do cloned. Very simple. And then uh, once done, you can issue command cluster.status. Okay. Then you will see uh, the you will see that you, you have a three node of InnoDB clusters. Okay, uh, then we need to create cluster set. We need to define a cluster set for this cluster. Then uh, the command is very simple, create cluster set. That's it. Then you will have one cluster set with one InnoDB clusters, okay? As you see, one cluster set, one InnoDB clusters. The name of InnoDB cluster is BRU. Then we can add replica clusters, okay? And then how to add? It's very simple. Cluster set that create replica cluster. Then you will have two rep, uh, two InnoDB clusters, okay? Additional InnoDB cluster has been added into the cluster set, yeah? With one node, which is primary node, yeah? On the replica cluster. After that, we can add instance to that primary node so that we will have a second instance and third instance running on a replica cluster, and you will have a three node InnoDB clusters on primary cluster and three node InnoDB cluster on replica clusters. As you see over here, you can check with cluster set status, cluster cluster set status, and you can see, okay, uh, you will have, you know, that you have the uh, two clusters InnoDB clusters, one primary, one replicas, and then yeah, that's it. Then uh, if you need more information, then you can add extended uh, column one. Then you can have more informations. Uh, in, in the output. Okay, this is the high availability scenario. I hope I still have time. Yes, I still have time, about seven minutes. And uh, we can change uh, primary members in a primary cluster. Let's say you have not one, not two, not three uh, in primary clusters, not one because of primary nodes, and you want to run a primary node uh, on, on second node. You want to switch then? Yeah, easy. Uh, the same as in ODB cluster. You can just uh, issue command set primary instance. The same thing uh, with the replica clusters, okay? Uh, you can just connect to the uh, primary node, uh, connect to the replica clusters, one of the nodes, and then you, you can run a set primary instance, okay, to switch over primary node from node one to node two, for example. How about the replication? The replication will follow. If you, um, you know, uh, set the primary instance to second node, then on the primary clusters, then the replica cluster will follow. The replications, okay, replication will change, not uh, from the node one of the primary clusters, but from the node two, yeah. If the primary node of the primary cluster fail, it's the same, right? It's the same like you switch as, uh, the primary from node one to node two. Uh, it will be automatically available to the, to the second node, and asynchronous replication will automatically adapt uh, with the new changes. The same thing with the replica clusters. Okay, uh, if the primary node of replica clusters down, okay, uh, the failovers to another nodes, then you know the replication will still be happening. You know, starting on the new nodes, uh, new primary nodes of the replica clusters uh, from the primary node of the uh, primary clusters. And then we can switch uh, roles. Okay, let's say uh, you have requirements. Let's uh, run our application on the other side. Okay, then we can just do um, set primary clusters. Uh, then it will flip the uh, cluster rules. Primary cluster become replicas. Replica clusters become primary clusters. As you see over here. So how about routers? Routers will fo always uh, follow the uh, primary clusters. So uh, we don't need to change anything from the application side. This is the process. Basically, once we run uh, set primary clusters, then the cluster rules will be flipped. Primary becomes primary. I mean, primary clusters become replica cluster, and replica clusters become uh, primary clusters. If we have a data center crash or uh, network partitions, then we have a command called uh, force primary clusters. Okay, to force the primary clusters, uh, sorry, force the uh, replica clusters on alternate side to become a primary clusters. But okay, we don't. Okay, since there are a lot of circumstances happening, okay, in this kind of scenario, so we, we are not, in, uh, you know, we, we are thinking to not have like, you know, but it's up to you, actually, if you want to develop like um, custom so-called witness on the third uh, side, let's say on the cloud, uh, just to monitor 
uh, primary cluster and replica clusters and do uh, some sort of automatic failovers from primary to replica is, I think is more towards um, really situational how much uh, how data loss that you know you can you can take because anyway if primary cluster is unavailable okay we don't know what is the status maybe some application is still writing into it so potential data loss will still be there okay so this is uh, the process of uh, emergency failovers to another clusters as you see uh, we can use a force primary clusters to set a primary uh, I mean replica cluster to be a primary cluster and set the uh, primary the existing primary cluster become invalidated status and so on so this is a status as you see over here okay only when the classes uh, cluster status is not okay invalidated and unknown okay uh, the rest of the status we can do a switch over and emergency failovers so this is the uh, restrictions that we have okay on InnoDB cluster set it must be uh, MySQL versions 8.0.27 and higher, and only works with single primary mode, so one primary and multiple secondary, and asynchronous replication is supported, and, and submissing is not supported. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to my presentations, and thanks for the time. Yep. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, okay, uh, let me give you the, the mic. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, Alvin here. Uh, okay, so what is the most difficult change management issue you can think of and how would you uh, execute that? Okay, so for example, an upgrade from one, one release to another or maybe even a secondary node you have a secondary node that is in this geographic location and we move to another country, for example. All right, so that is, so that kind of scenario. Thank you so much for the questions. Okay, very good questions. Uh, change management okay, is more towards uh, operational, you know, kind of things, okay. How the user or customers actually using, you know, DB class is set. Uh, I mean, I, I give you a scenario. For example, if the customer is using, let's say, standalone instance, how to convert a standalone instance into InnoDB cluster set, okay, across geographical locations, and then how to upgrade, how to do patching, and so on, right? Is, is that your question? Scenario, okay. Um, well, let's say, for example, we have uh, three not InnoDB clusters uh, on the, let's say, Singapore, and we have uh, disaster recovery on Kuala Lumpur, let's say, and we want to uh, create the InnoDB uh, cluster set to link up this, uh, you know, InnoDB cluster in Singapore uh, and, and replicate to InnoDB cluster set on, on, on KL, for example, right? And then um, we want to do upgrade, let's say. I'm sorry? Uh, Singapore to KL. Yep. Okay. The, the primary cluster in Singapore, the replica cluster in KL. Is that what you, is what you want? Okay. So let's say you want to do the uh, upgrade, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say I give you an example. Uh, if we have, uh, you know, uh, data center movement, let's say, okay, if, uh, for secondary data center, I don't want to use uh, KL data center anymore. I want to use Middle East, for example, right? Then uh, it's pretty much simple process. Basically, we need to create a replica cluster on Middle East first. So we need to run three uh, InnoDB clusters within the InnoDB cluster set, okay? After this tabless, we can just the commissions the uh, InnoDB cluster on KL. The same thing with upgrade, you need to upgrade the replicas uh, clusters first and then followed by the primary clusters. Thank you. <laughs>